welcome to a special bonus episode of Character Creation Spotlight, everyone. In this bonus segment, we'll be shining a light on some current or up-and-coming games to keep an eye out for. I'm one of your hosts, Amelia, and today my co-host Ryan and I are welcoming Jess Levine and Seta to talk about I Have the High Ground, a collaborative two-player dueling RPG of banter, posturing, and capes. Yes. Uh, welcome to Character Creation Spotlight, both of you. It is really great to have you here with us. Thank you. It's so nice to be here. This is very exciting. Yeah. I was listening recently to your uh, Alchemistresses episode. Oh, and it was so, so good. It was so what a good, good. game. I'm like so cute. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. And it is just like wonderful to get to be here with. I have the high ground. Thanks for, yes. for having us on. I'm absolutely. excited about this. I'm so excited about this. <laughs> I know. <laughs> All right, Jess, can you start us off by telling a bit about it yourself uh, and what sort of projects you have going on uh, aside from I have the high ground? Absolutely. So as you said, I'm Jess Levine, sometimes better known as Jess from online. Uh, and I'm an author, musician and game designer. I Right now, I'm sort of juggling the very middle of a lot of things. So I have the high ground is the the big thing that is coming out next. But mm-hmm. I'm uh, prototyping a board game. We'll see if that goes anywhere Ooh. about like uh, starship carrier combat. Uh, and then uh, sort of in the process of starting to write up another TTRPG uh, inspired by I have the high ground about like uh, a ship giving a distress call and another one trying to rescue it. So sorry, did you just make to- say so you're going to make a game inspired by another game that you made? That's As like amazing, like, though. That's like <laughs> that's like like creative confidence, and I just I'm really here for that. There are a lot of other inspirations I could and have named as I explain it in the car to everyone who will listen. Uh, more just like I want to take some like structural parallels. Gotcha. Like this, is, this is the style of game I'm making. But thank yes. you. I, I, I was really like, I really it. aspire to that. Like, wow. Uh, but yeah, I'm doing that. I'm also working on two EPs. Like, like I said, I make music as Liquid Crystal and Quine. Uh, and yeah, a lot of projects uh, juggling in the air. But this is the big one. Um, oh, and you can find me on Twitter as at Jess from online, uh, as I said, um, and everything else you can find through there. Very cool. Um, and Seda, how about yourself? Hi, I'm Seda. Um, I do some of those things also that Jess mentioned. I have some games uh, that are very lovingly, slowly limping their way towards playtesting. And I put out a lot of music and stuff as people you meet outside of bars and piloting the animal. Uh, the easiest way to find my stuff would also be probably on Twitter, uh, where I'm nudity at, with E-A instead of a Y, or at my website, gaygothvibes.online. What a good cool. website. Oh, I'm always really jealous when people come on here with like really good websites too. It was to it like... was gifted to me, actually, the URL. Oh. I somebody approached me after a show and said was sort of gesturing to me, holding a pint like a pint in one hand and moving their hand just generally at my aura, I guess, in a bar after a show <laughs> and said, I love your like gay goth vibes. And I posted about this and one of my friends DM'd me within a week saying, Hi. You now have the URL gaygothvibes.online. Do with it as you will. <laughs> That's amazing. It I was know. wonderful. I'm only just now realizing that I have Jess from dot online and we both had these <gasps> before we knew each other. Yes. So we both have dot online addresses. <laughs> That's, oh, so That's good. Awesome. amazing. <laughs> That's good. Gosh. Oh, uh-huh. That's quality branding is what that is. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Great. The cyborgs have logged on. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you both for being here. Uh, since this is an abridged version of our normal format, uh, we will be sticking to the highlights of the system with a special focus on character creation. So without further ado, how about we find out what this game is all about? What's in a game? All right. Uh, so could you start off by telling us a bit about the core concept for I Have the High Ground? Absolutely. So Amelia already gave us a a little bit of an introduction with that. It's a collaborative two player dueling RPG of banter, posturing and capes, which is always my my one liner, (laughs) Um, because there's there's two important things that you have to know about. I have the high ground one. It is not about combat. It is not the primary verb is not beating up on each other. It is about banter. It is about like 
appearing better and more intimidating or yes. more stylish or anything like that <laughs> than your opponent. Um, and the second thing that you have to know is that capes are very, very important. Uh, and we will loop back to why that is. But yeah, uh, it uses in mechanics inspired by competitive fencing. So like you're going to pick moves in a rock, paper, scissors triangle in play, which we won't do today. You would pick moves uh, like thrust, feint, or parry. But those don't represent actual sword thrusts. In fact, you can play this in any genre that you want. Instead, those represent what sort of approach do you take to this duel of posture? Mm. Are you being like direct and insulting and aggressive? Or are you trying to like bait your opponent into an overly emotional reaction by bringing up something juicy from their past? Or are you trying to just like sit back and let them blunder and then come up with your like, witty um counter counter attack isn't the word i'm looking for C come back there we go that's the that's yeah. the dialogue word i'm so used to translating uh like combat words into yeah. um like dialogue words because that's sort of the general conceit of this game's mechanics so that's the the main way play works and then character creation which is what we'll be focusing on here is just about setting up for that duel because this is usually played in a one-shot format it is sit down get some characters made in like 60 to 90 minutes, if that, um, and like establish the world of your game, play out this one, like you two are about to fight, about to have combat, but before it, you need to have those <laughs> moments of like monologuing at each other and all of that. Ugh. And then the game ends when the first blow is struck against the other person. In fact, the loser must get frustrated or done or just like run out of patience and strike that first blow. That's oh, so wow. good. So that's <laughs> oh, that's so oh, good. I, I love everything about that. Oh, yeah, that's I. I want more of that in games. I want more games to have things that are like, we're almost at combat, but first. <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to end up slotting this into a lot of my games. It sounds like it's just being like, okay, but like before it's, we actually fight, what yeah. it's actually in the rule book that like, if you want to take characters from a campaign you're already playing, yeah. skip the skip the character creation section, just do the background and then have your like duel of posture. And then as soon as the end happens, Go back to whatever go system you're you using. Go back to your D&D or whatever. Yeah. And yeah. Very cool. Very I cool. I, I love the thought of like having uh, uh, just whatever two characters that you want to set up in this scenario that don't have capes normally. But then you like play this game <laughs> and, you have and they've to put got these like them. amazing capes. And it's as if like a different artist is drawing that comic <laughs> line or something. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's like, it's like a free comic book day version. Yeah, you have to like yeah, like a little special or edition. an anime. Yeah, yes. where like suddenly they yes. have capes on like they didn't like the, right. the camera changes yeah, and it comes and their back hair and they're is now just wearing like way capes. bigger than it was before too. <laughs> they just like slapstick style fall through somebody's laundry that's hanging and have a sheet wrapped <laughs> around them. Yeah, love it, love it. Amazing, absolutely. And yes, as you'll see and cape can be interpretive we've had games where someone's cape was uh, a leather jacket that they had like thrown over their shoulders mm -hmm. the one of the actual plays from the crowd funder it was the zip up hoodie of the opponent's favorite ex-girlfriend oh. Um, oh my god that's so trauma. good amazing i love the stuff people do in games i love when people have those moments of like you know what would be the meanest thing that i could do i'm gonna do that <laughs> Like, but like in a nice, <laughs> fun way, you know. Yeah, yeah. it's like the very time primed for that. Yeah. Okay, I'm here for this. I'm so here for this. <laughs> and yeah. and actually, on that note, um, I I say in the uh, tagline that it's collaborative, right? Mm -hmm. But it's also a dueling game. What do you mean collaborative dueling? Um, <laughs> and I think that's worth, from a philosophical <laughs> perspective, going to really quick, which is that like in this game. You're not really trying to win. Right. I encourage you to like choose moves based on what your character's like mood and thought process and emotions are in that moment, because it is about telling a satisfying narrative. Mm -hmm. It is about a victory of like who looks better, but also like moments where you lose rounds that you lose are an opportunity to show your character's vulnerability and what they care about and what gets them activated. And that's just as rich and satisfying and important. Um, and so when I say collaborative, it is because you're going back and forth and saying, 
well, what if your character did this because then my character would react this way? Would you like that? Mm -hmm. Like it is about working together to tell the story that you want to tell more than it is about competing with each other to win the duel. I also think that that's a really good example of the ways that we can we can play characters that hate each other and still have a good collaborative play experience Mm -hmm. and those are some of my favorite characters to play is like people i play with my best friends that like we'll sit down and our characters hate each other they do (laughs) not get along and we as friends are like on the outside playing this having just the best time you know (laughs) because sometimes it's fun to play out those kinds of like little like petty squabbles in this like Mm -hmm. way melodramatic Mm -hmm. fashion and it seems like this game is like primed for that there's something yeah, so we... like satisfying about playing a scene where the two of you um, are being so in character vicious enough that like the discord chat is lighting up with like, oh, <laughs> just like people in chat going like, oh, how could you? <laughs> <laughs> right. I, I, I love that it's collaborative that you work together on this because like uh, I I personally have a hard time with like player versus player conflict. Having this sort of antagonism between two characters and working together to resolve that conflict is is uh, feels to me like very satisfying instead of like role playing the antagonism as your characters. (laughs) Right. So I I, I'm 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 so here for learning more about this and seeing how that works and and everything. Uh, This is so fascinating. I know. So let's start by looking at the setting. Um, You've mentioned a couple of times that you can kind of slot this in anywhere. So is is the setting something that you bring to the game? Does the game offer like some steps for creating a setting if you don't have one already? Absolutely. So um, the like book, so this is a zine made for zine month and it has art by uh, Ezra Rose, who's incredibly talented. And it's like a sci fantasy thing. Um, So like swords and space stations is usually Mm -hmm. the way I describe it. But that is not the setting that it has to be played in, nor does it have to be Star Wars, uh, even despite the uh, quote that you might recognize for the title. The very first thing you do is to choose your genre, like just out of anything that you can think of Mm. we have i have seen i have the high ground games that scale up from like huge like space fantasy the fate of the galaxy depends on this to having lesbian ex drama at a party and like one of them has like canceled the other um (laughs) and um a post-apocalyptic bake-off and a fist fight between fighting game cosplayers outside a in, in a Denny's parking lot. So it's literally really anything. Sad, <laughs> literally <laughs> anything you can think of. And so, yeah, you just start out by establishing a genre together and stakes, and we'll get into what that means in a second. And then you start saying, who are our characters within this big box that we've set up? And so there's a series of choices. They're referred to as the background and character sections. I don't say setting because the background section also involves like, who are your characters to each other? What is their history together? And then you flesh out the individual details later. So it's the background, not the setting. Um, But once you have that background, you hop in, figure out who your characters are, and then you can play. So it, it walks you through those steps, including a lot of the mechanics are built to establish tension between mm. your characters. Like it is a game about dueling. And so you work together to figure out what factors add tension between our characters. Mm. Very cool. Very, yeah, oh, I'm like so that. excited for this. All right. So I. Uh, what sort of materials do we need to actually play a game of I Have the High Ground? It's actually, it's fairly low in material. You can have character sheets that are available, um, or you can use a Google Doc if you're online. Um, but you can also just write down some of these details on a sheet. You don't have a ton of like stats and calculations to do. So you don't have to worry about that quite as much. Two six-sided die. They're used very rarely. There's a special type of move you can do called a penalty move, which is like the ultimate disrespect. You're either like intentionally disarming yourself of your weapon, whatever that means, or you are turning your back on your opponent with the intent to leave. And in competitive fencing, that's a penalty. And in I Have the High Ground, you uh, roll 2d6 instead of the normal thing. And depending Mm. on whether you roll 
equal to, above, or below your score, something very, very dramatic happens. Very cool. Oh, I like that. And then sort of the main thing that you need is some way to show each other what moves that you've chosen. Um, Because like we said, there's faint parry, thrust, and penalty move. If you back to the crowdfunder, there are sets of uh, nine wooden tokens that have those like hidden on one side and you can put those in your fist and then like pop you three, two, one and pop up. This is the move that I chose because it's simultaneously revealed like rock, paper, scissors. And it goes in a circle, right? Thrust beats faint, faint beats parry, parry beats thrust. Oh, very nice. But if you don't have those nine wooden tokens, uh, you can do what was done for most of playtesting, which is you take a uh, sheet of paper, you write down the move names on them, rip them into little sheets, and then hold those in your fists. Or if you're playing online, which was done pretty much just as often, you can just like have a chat program open and both of you type your move and then you do three, two, one, enter. And then you have your like Mm. (gasps) gasp who won (laughs) moment. (laughs) I like that one. Yeah. I just like a slow reveal good all of a sudden like oh no (laughs) uh but yeah that's really all that you need if you have those you can play a game if i have the high ground very cool we've touched on it a few times but i want to specifically get into it what kinds of characters do you make for this game absolutely anything (laughs) um i've seen wizards i've seen fighter pilots i think uh seda and i's first game we were like part of a space mercenary company but Mm -hmm. then we like Mm -hmm. split off into two different companies um and then there was like a bunch of drama with like a betrayal and stuff like that like i said we've i've seen just lesbian exes at a party one of whom was in a harrow the ninth cosplay um (laughs) in fact we've had two play tests have had cosplayers um one of which was utina and one of which was harrow the ninth which says what sort of people i have had play testing this game (laughs) checks out Uh uh-huh I had a frequently asked question for the crowdfunder, quote unquote, frequently asked, which was, does my character have to be a lesbian? To which I said, no, you are perfectly welcome to also have uh, like homosexual men or non and non-binary people, lesbian or not. You can technically play a straight character. I just haven't play tested it and can't guarantee your experience. Um, <laughs> that sounds very much like the conversation we had when we did Thirsty Sword Lesbians too, where April was like, people are like, what if not thirsty? What if not lesbians? What if not swords? And it was like, well, sure, I guess. But like, why? <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, really anything, though, like I said, there's some things I've play tested more than others. Yeah, so it seems like it's a lot more about the relationship with the characters between each other rather than to a specific world or having to be a specific type of character. So really, it's like anything as long as the two of you have some kind of rivalry or something to argue over. Mm-hmm. Exactly. It is far more about the character dynamic than where each of your characters Mm -hmm. is coming from. And one of the first things that you do in creation is establish a history between your characters. And I'll I'll read those options when we get there. But that helps lay out like you'll see a pattern between them of like what makes it interesting, the way your characters relate to each other. Mm -hmm. It is about a particular... Part of part of I have the high ground is about looking at role playing games at like a meta narrative level, right? My big experience, like that, really got me into designing games was a actually the tabletop RPG where I met Seda was this big game of Galactic, which is a belonging outside belonging system. Mm -hmm. Um, So that's belonging outside belonging is Avery Alder and Benjamin Rosenbaum's Dream Askew, Dream Apart. And then Riley Rethel made Galactic, which was a Star Wars, like Mm. Star Wars with the serial numbers filed off, (laughs) uh, belonging outside belonging. And then we played that campaign so have the four of us, me, Seda, uh, Rhi, and Bree, wrote... Over 100,000, yeah. (laughs) words of microfiction on top of our role play oh Oh, goodness how long was the play doc by the time like by now say that oh i actually unfortunately can't answer that because it got so long that it wasn't opening properly and i had to separate (laughs) it into separate like different play docs (laughs) oh no yeah Um, but my experience of doing that that's a gm-less game as well and my experience of doing that was like the four of us really sat there and were like oh we're writing a story 
what if we talk together, like, especially once we started actually writing like short fiction, um, it was like, what if we talk together about what it means to write this story? What story is satisfying to us? What are we trying to, to, to have happen? Um, and like, that's a thing that happens at the table naturally anyway. Mm-hmm. But it really got me to start thinking about like, story archetypes, um, and like, just fictional tropes and story structures as uh, a part of tabletop RPGs. And because I have the high ground is just one scene, basically, right. um, it allows you to, to zoom in on this is an archetypal fiction scene. This is like how these scenes are structured. And so any sort of like setting and character that can be filled into this scene structure works for this game. Yeah. And it says like it allows you to be a lot more intentional about those kinds of things happening in your game mm-hmm. by by putting in mechanics for something like that, which I, I really like because I, I think you're right. These are scenes that are happening in lots of different kinds of stories and settings and ways, you know, like everything from weird, awkward party after a breakup to <laughs> Denny's parking lot to, mm-hmm. you know, epic space battle. Yeah. I, I really, really like that. I wanted to ask, too, there's, you know, what are, are there sorts of um, like levels of conflict that seem to work better here? Like, is there like a certain amount of like, you know, like Ryan and I are having a petty argument about something versus like this is a big life or death situation or is it does it does it scale all the way through those kinds of things too? I love so much that you asked that <laughs> because we've talked about how the first question that you answer in background is genre and the third is history between characters that's like sort of naturally followed from each of our questions. Mm-hmm. The second thing that you settle is stakes. Gotcha. Uh-huh. And that is yes. is this a low stakes like just like matter of pride like who gets between the cat two people and who, uh, you know, who saves the or world or like exactly mm-hmm. um and in fact the stakes come from weights of fencing weapons uh but we'll get into oh my that gosh, in the so actual good. process <laughs> this is um, very good <laughs> the game is designed to be learned in play um especially character and setting creation like it's helpful if one person has read through the book first but i've had people sit down and just not even have read to the next page they just do each character creation step and it has a set of instructions along with that step and that's how you learn how to make characters. And so I'll, I'll go into detail about these as we do it, because that's part of the process is just read a little bit and pick. Awesome. Very cool. Well, I'm really excited. Uh, I think we're at the point where we can start creating characters. So you want to walk us through a session zero? Yeah, sounds perfect. Well, uh, we've got four people here and we create pairs of people. Oh, look at uh, that. What good math. So. So do we want to do we want to split off and create two pairs of people uh, with ourselves? Yeah, I think that sounds great. Um, do, do you and Amelia want to do one and then Seda and I'll do one? Yeah, I love it. All right. Very cool. Let's make some people. Let's make some people. Awesome. I'm excited. So the very first thing you pick, and if you're following along at home on the on the PDF by any chance, this would be starting off on page five is just genre. This can be as we've very well established, anything that you want, uh, anything that really calls to you. Seda and I, I often, for podcast format, like start talking a little bit uh, about genre beforehand. Uh, Seda and I had talked sort of about like small time space criminals. Mm -hmm. Mm. If you're still feeling that at all, Seda. Absolutely. Cool. We do lots of space sci-fi stuff. (laughs) Wonderful. (laughs) Um, I don't know that we have a name for our genre. Ryan and I always just end up doing magical girls and necromancers. Uh huh. It's just that I'm always a necromancer and Ryan is always a magical girl. And this is yeah, just yeah. what we do. Like sometimes when we mean to, sometimes when we don't, it's just where we always end up. And so I don't think there's a name for that genre, but I would like to just be magical girls and necromancers again. Yeah. yeah. I would like I just, to subscribe to that genre. I if think it, I would like to call it a name. Character creation cast. <laughs> <laughs> The genre. I love I love that contrast, like the magic of life and death, right? Yes, yeah. so yes I like to call it the undying magic of love and friendship. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so okay. we'll call we'll call our genre. I'll just put character creation cast. Yes, <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> we but know not, what our not Amelia is. and Ryan, but magical worlds no. and necromancers. Yeah. Uh-huh. Cool. So now that we've picked our genre, we go on to stakes. There are three stakes available. Foil, saber, and epee. Foil is 
low stakes, kind of. This is like an actual fencing match or boxing or a bar fight or an argument or mm. extra drama, assuming it's nonviolent. This is mostly probably a matter of pride and no one's going to die as a like outcome of the battle that follows your duel. Mm -hmm. But make no mistake, pride's Pride's it's a good important. feeling. Yeah, it is. It's yeah, yeah, yeah. intense and dramatic and intimate. Like lean into the over drama when you pick foil. Then saber. This is what you would more classically think of as a quote unquote duel. In saber, the battle that follows your like posturing and banter, your game if I have the high ground, is probably going to be fatal for at least one of you. Mm -hmm. And this is like knights dueling for their lords or a quest for mortal vengeance, something like that. And finally, a pay. This is towering stakes. This is like generals or a Jedi and a Sith or like two hackers trying to take control of a life support system for like their entire other ships. Mm -hmm. It is going to be lethal, at least for them, and might be for like entire armies or planets or worlds. This is everything rides on this. Mm -hmm. And so this just helps you in the rest of the, the process, like know how big of the drama are we talking about? That exact question that you had, Amelia, it helps you like get that scope yeah. up front. Mm -hmm. So Zeta, for our space criminals, are you feeling any like level of stakes in particular? I've got a few options I'm thinking, but I wanted to ask. I'm a huge fan of getting as petty as possible, but <laughs> meaning it really hard. So I think I love I love to have the stakes be foil, but treat them as though they are epe. Mm. Yes, 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 yes. I love that. I love that. I, I don't know. Amelia, I think. I was kind of torn between I'm like, is this super petty or is this like super important? I, I don't know. <laughs> if If we're talking like magical girls versus necromancers, the anime. Yeah, this is probably this, like world ending stuff, this, right? This would be this would be a pay like hands down. Yeah. I, okay, yeah, I'm thinking let's do it. Madoka. Yeah. <laughs> let's yeah, do yeah. it. This, the fate of the universe is literally in our hands. Okay. Let's do it. I really love the energy of like we're playing like space criminals and the stakes are so like quote unquote low and you're playing like a magical girl and the fate of the yeah. universe depends on it, which is totally part right. of the genre. I just really like the, the aesthetics. Yeah, we're, we're really like playing the anime here. I'm, I'm feeling right. it. Cool. So now that we've got our stakes set out, we go into history. This is who your characters are to each other. And this is the first time you'll probably be establishing a more concrete backstory. A lot of like big ideas, spaghetti at the wall comes up here. Mm. And it's important to say that I, I sort of say up front, rules are inspiration, not limitation in general, I but especially that. when I have the high ground. And so if you decide like, I'm starting to settle the history, but actually this I want to know about what the the pl place we're dueling is, or I need to know what my character looks like in order to be able to answer this question. You can jump ahead and come back. If you just start talking about like, oh, what if our characters do this and they did this and remember when they did this thing, it is totally fine if creation takes the form of conversation. And then you come back and say, how does this map onto the mechanics? Okay. Mm -hmm. And so the mechanics are there as guide rails. And most of the games that I witness, like, generally follow this flow and if you're getting out of the flow you're not doing something wrong as long as you pick your cape before your weapon All right. and <laughs> so yeah this is where you really do big dreaming and the things here are to give you prompts for that big dreaming cool and because these are so important and pretty short i am going to read the list for history because you are supposed to choose one to two things from this list oh. and actually really commonly speaking of out of order i'll pick one and then we'll go on and then come back and pick a second when we want to open things up okay not always but frequently cool. so your options for history are betrayal Rivals, arch nemeses, revenge, mutual respect, or unrequited respect. Mm. Ex lovers, former allies, unrequited love, strangers on the battlefield, or mentor and mentee. Okay, so I got four in mind. Oh, okay. <laughs> Go ahead. Okay, absolutely. Let's see if any of these are the ones that I'm thinking. All right. All right. Uh, betrayal. Ooh, okay, love it. Former allies. Uh huh. Uh, ex lovers. Uh huh. Um, and yeah, I think that's pro probably. See, because I was going to say maybe unrequited love would be fun. Or, okay, so either ex lovers or unrequited love. Um, 
So, I mean, I feel like Betrayal, former allies, I feel like those kind of go together, right? Like, yeah. If you don't mind the um, game designer butting in yeah, here for a second. Yeah, go for it. Uh, you're always welcome to like break my rules, especially by picking more options than I ask you to. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> and also to offer a back, uh, possibility. You can be exes and unrequited love. That's Ooh. totally a thing oh. that happens between human beings. Um, I'm sorry, people are complicated? I don't understand. <laughs> <laughs> That doesn't sound right to me. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Not to mandate what your game has to be. Just want to offer because I'm so excited about these ideas. You could be exes and one person could not want to be exes still. Exactly. Oh, true. yeah. Yeah. Oh, I Ryan, can see that Ryan, working Ryan, that's really well. messy and we do love messy. We do love messy. <laughs> oh, we love messy. <laughs> all right. All right. So all, should we all be... All four. Um, yeah, let's do betrayal <laughs> and <laughs> ex-lovers. <laughs> And For, former allies and unrequited love. Yeah. Okay. So we were on a team together. Yeah. Yeah. So you're in like season three of the anime at this <laughs> yeah, point, yeah, right? Yeah. Like right. this is yeah. not a first season battle. No, for sure. No. For sure. This is yeah. a, we were on a team and then I, I, I it, it has to be uh, your character. Obviously the necromancer uh, betrayed. Oh, for my sure. Team. Obviously. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> really? Because you're Genre all you're conventions. all about betrayal. I right? guess maybe you think it's a betrayal, okay. but maybe I did it to save you. Oh, you don't know. Maybe I don't know either. I'm so excited <laughs> to find out more about your character. <laughs> <laughs> I guess we'll we'll find out. I guess so. <laughs> so right. Okay. So for our space criminals. Mm-hmm. Um, there's one I'm tossing around, though I'll also throw it to you if you have some like strong things immediately. Uh, my first thing is that as I was looking at these options, my brain mushed two together to come up <gasps> with uh, mutually unrequited love. Uh, the idea <gasps> that either we were in love with each other and both thought the other mm-hmm. wasn't, or I guess not quite as interestingly, we both assumed the other one was in love with us and we were like, I don't want that. Um, but I think it's like mutually unrequited doesn't technically make any sense as a phrase. Um, but I think uh, it could be this wonderful. Instance, it absolutely does. <laughs> that is uh-huh. incredible. I love it. See, this, Seda, this is why I play games with you. Like, <laughs> as we'll talk about, Seda, Seda is one of the like uh, a game design consultant. This is a game design consultant on this game because the process of playing games with Seda, including the very first game of I Have the High Ground was played with Seda added so much to the game because they do things like what if we mash these two options right. together and you have mutually unrequited love <laughs> so um, much. and yes i love i love the first one that you defined like our characters are in love with each other but like don't think the other one does and are probably like pretty insecure oh, about that right like they're like so much. peacocking so that like so well you don't love me but i'm gonna show you how good i am even though they don't oh, do they already it like just you. makes you love them more which really makes me want, it makes me want the one I wanted uh, before anyway. If you're down for rivals, the idea that like this attempt to like cope with their emotion has led to them constantly trying to like one up one another to like, to, like be prove impressive. yourself and like um, <sighs> the downfall of being somebody who tries to flirt by being very competent in front of you. Be like, hey, look how good I am at this. And the other person's like, ugh. Stop trying to be good at stuff. I'm also good at stuff. You you would be in love with me if you knew how good I am. Please stop describing all of my relationships. (laughs) Thank you. (laughs) Yeah, I think that's. I'll show you that I don't need you. (laughs) Perfect. Okay, I'm already so invested in both of these characters. Like I don't even know who these people are, and I love their dynamics. So good. Cool. So next up, we do. Uh, descriptors. Um, and speaking of things that happened in the process of uh, playtesting, um, this wasn't in the first draft of I Have the High Ground. This comes out of the game that Seda and I played, the very first playtest. Um, and we'll talk, I think, like after we do creation, a little bit more of like how that happened. Yeah. Um, but this is a mechanic that like developed in play. So for descriptors, we have a table um, full of sets of words like cruel versus empathetic and young versus wizened. And together, Each of our sets will pick one pair of opposites that describe our characters, Mm -hmm. one thing that is the same for both characters, and then two to three individual words that describe your character. And so 
you pick for opposites, you just pick one like little verses set. For the same, you just pick one word. And for individuals, pull from anywhere you want on the table. Ooh. Okay. And if you need to take a little bit of time, this is often where you like really dig in and spend a little time looking at what's available to you. And that's totally mm -hmm. fine. Okay. But when you have ideas, toss them out. I'm going to say that this like flamboyant versus subtle is definitely a no because neither of us is going to be subtle. No. That's not a thing that we want. <laughs> Your all. same could be flamboyant. That's very fun same. I mean, I think, I think it should be. What do you think, what Ryan? It, maybe. Yeah, maybe. I think We flamboyant. can come back to it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I was, I was, uh, the cruel versus empathetic was kind of on my brain. Like, what if we were going against type a bit? And I, I like that what you said before, like you betrayed the team to save the team for their own good. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. and like, what if like this swapped my way of thinking and I became the cruel one? Ooh. Oh. All right. Like, like I'm trying to stop you because I think you are doing something that's going to destroy the universe. Yeah. And in in fact, I'm I'm going against my like previous two seasons worth of character development, and now I'm doing these really heinous things. Okay. To try to stop you at all cost. Wow. Late Sayaka character arc. Um. Like, yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So yeah, cruel versus empathetic can be our our opposites, right? Mm. And then we can go in any order of like you all doing the rest of yours versus Sadine doing ours. But I do have an idea actually for same, just to prove more that you can do this out of order. Mm -hmm. Sadine, I was wondering if you'd be interested in Koi as our same. Um, like the idea of like both of us are playing it a little bit distant and a little bit like we're trying to appear like the like I feel like that makes a lot of sense and like um like very internal sense mm -hmm. to make the other person want them except all that's doing is making it very unclear that either of them actually have this crush I see where you're coming from with that and I think we want to be in that area to me koi is a little cuter than I was expecting like totally I think it's definitely possible but when we were talking about them before, they they seemed a little bit brusque. Um, and to me, Koi would be a little bit, oh, don't chase me, uh, you know, which is oh, like a, yeah. a little a, a little bit different. And like, I think it could still be fun, but it does mean the tension is closer to um, misunderstanding than it is us being like, why don't you love me? <laughs> totally. <laughs> that was like actually my big concern. Stoic was like feels like almost a little bit. Closer. Totally. I yeah. was also uh, honestly also considering borrowing flamboyant, um, <laughs> which I know seems like the opposite of koi, but it's 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 still this like very distant thing for them. But I think what you are saying about like we're trying to show off in these big ways, flamboyant does mm -hmm. feel appropriate. And I also just want to say that like I hear that concern. My first thought was like, oh, this does contradict what I was saying about rivals. So it wasn't like perfect. But it, is anything jumping out for you for opposites or for same? <sighs> I mean, there's so many options here because it, it can be about our relationship, but it can also be about the way that we are performing, whatever this argument is. For instance, Ooh. if we are both famous or both infamous as we are, you know, space scoundrels, um, that means that there there is a more performative aspect to us like in the bar having this argument, you know, uh, this <gasps> this space station bar. So I, I think that could be interesting to define as well. Mm. I love the idea of like, we are famous in a very specific context, which is not necessarily the context we are in. <laughs> like, Interesting. We might be famous among a particular network of criminals, but we are f showing off in this bar as if we are galactic most wanted because we're trying to like Ooh, perform that I to each it. other. Um, <laughs> so just like really out of step with our surroundings in our own like grandiose visions of ourselves that Absolutely. are purely get the other person's entrance. And I think in like the genre convention of it, what we are is we are a side story that was written 30 years after this movie came out. They're like, what was <laughs> happening in the cantina while this battle was going on on the other side of the planet? And we're like, we're the main characters. <laughs> Absolutely. I'm putting famous in quotes as our same. 
That's wonderful. Cool. Oh, so good. Ryan and Amelia, anything y'all are feeling? Uh, I see Ryan has picked passionate for himself. Yeah, I picked passionate for my own uh, character. I I do like uh, flamboyant for a same because that just over the top uh, for both that of that us sounds like a lot of fun. Sense for like what we are too. Yeah, like, I don't think anybody has <laughs> been like, mm, yes, necromancers and magical girls. Very subtle, <laughs> very low key. <laughs> yeah. Like nobody becomes a necromancer because they're chill. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Please, I want that quote on something. <laughs> <laughs> <It's so good. laughs> yeah. I think flamboyant works. Yeah. And I think next, Sade and I would be really good to, to like figure out how our characters are like opposites and yeah. like how, what, because like part of the point here is to like set up these characters as, as foils to each other. And things that I was, there's sort of a list that I was feeling vengeful versus forgiving is interesting to me. Debonair versus utilitarian um, is interesting to me. Uh-huh. Vulgar versus tact, uh, tactful, quick versus measured, and careful versus reckless. I just hit you with a lot, but those are the like five <laughs> that are all standing out to me. Yeah, I am. Uh, well, if we're both famous, that's interesting. Okay, I um, I didn't fully absorb all of the uh, options you tossed at me. Sorry. Totally, I can narrow it down. Also, sure. Yeah. Cool. Um, I think. Debonair versus utilitarian is really interesting because it means that we're going to perform so differently. Like one of our performances is extravagance and one of the performances is look how just good I am at this. Like I get the job done. Debonair Um, is also so interesting to me put in this sort of space of uh scoundrels uh sort of <laughs> sounding very bounty huntery type thing it makes me think of um somebody who went into the you know sims career path of rather than um they're not out finding objects they're like infiltrating the royalty <laughs> for yes. their bounties and that kind of thing i think that's interesting i am curious what your vision of utilitarian in this would be I would be totally comfortable like taking the utilitarian if you wanted to do the debonair because my vision of it is something along the lines of like my work isn't flashy, but it is productive. Like I have stolen 80 crates of heavy machinery and no one cares that I've stolen 80 crates of heavy machinery. (laughs) But do you understand how much that goes for on the black market? Um, (laughs) Like. I guess that kind of contradicts with the famous, but I think I am famous for just like, like I am a scourge of the local businesses, but like no one's like, oh, she's so cool. It's, <laughs> oh, uh, it's, you don't want her around because she will steal all of your heavy machinery. I and, have um, one other thing. My my concern there, I think, is that utilitarian, um, I don't know how it interacts with what we've set up for, um, like if you're utilitarian, why didn't you just say something? You know what I mean Um, about your love. I would like to suggest wordy versus concise. And the way that this has partially played into is that the wordy person says so much that you can actually understand what they're trying to say because they just keep talking and obfuscating their point. And the concise person doesn't say enough, doesn't get Mm. to the point, actually. I love that. That's so good. That's beautiful and really ties directly to our character dynamic and like the love dynamic so i really like that choice um it defines like a really important part of this do you have a desire to be the wordy one or the concise one i can banter but i can monologue is one thing i can say about myself so i could go with wordy (laughs) (laughs) okay cool absolutely uh then i'll take concise i'll aim for those those pithy Mm one-liners um Awesome. Ryan and Amelia, are you feeling any individual descriptors? I am really struggling here. I am having a hard time figuring out, like, what what I want. So I assume, like, if we used to work together, like, I used to be a magical girl, right? Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. Like, But, uh, like, now so, I'm, I'm necromancer? So, uh, well, you might have been the necromancer magical girl, right? right? The, the magical girl of death, <laughs> everyone's favorite. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I was I was playing through this in my brain uh, as uh, Jess and uh, Sato were talking. What if it's like 
we found this, you know, dark orb of power or right. whatever, you like know, you mm -hmm. some sort of MacGuffin. And you know that to use it for ourselves will be fine or or you'll have to use it to to save the world or the universe, basically. Right. Right. And I'm of the mind it has to be destroyed. Uh huh. And if you destroy it, that's what triggers the collapse of the universe. I see. Mm. But I know that you can't do that. Yeah. But I just won't listen to reason. Gotcha. Because I know it's like it's it's mm -hmm. pure evil energy, but like. Okay. So in that case, I feel like that's sort of like a. Uh, yeah. I mean, you, you did passionate as one of yours. Mm -hmm. um, I feel like. Yeah, I mean, I feel like the stoic side of that sort of matches for mine, then, is not so much stoic as, like, but, like, practical, mm -hmm. you know? U utilitarian? Yes, there we go. That is exactly... Yeah, actually, I'm like, I know there's one here that is, like, what I'm looking for. There we go. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, utilitarian. Perfect. Yeah, that sounds great. And for what it's worth, design thing here, you can totally pick more opposites, pick more that are the same. It's just whatever you want that, like, fleshes out who your character Perfect. is. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I think utilitarian makes a lot of sense. It's like, look, maybe this isn't the most, like, cool and fun option for what to do with this, but, like, it's going to work. Yeah. Let's see. For mine, I think I'm going to take cunning. Like, if I'm going to go concise, I think I'm also going to be, like, uh, a little, like, plotter um, and, like, very much aiming for those, like pithy word plays and all of that sort of stuff um now cunning has its limits i'm not necessarily <laughs> empathetically aware of other people's emotions <laughs> but i'm very good at like manipulating a situation mm -hmm. i'm trying to decide between impulsive and reckless um, <gasps> i love like <laughs> both of them being because it's you... one thing oh god yeah, just they they are very they are they are close but they are colored in differently. Mm -hmm. Um yes. and I'm I think I'm leaning towards impulsive cuz I think that the the character that I'm starting to see here is somebody who throws themselves into things because they are very sure that they are going to be able to talk long enough to turn it around, which actually maybe that is reckless. Yeah. Uh, I, I think it's very much like they, they sort of believe there's no situation I can get myself into that I cannot make noise for long enough that I can get myself out of it. <laughs> I love that so <laughs> much. That's so good. <laughs> so I think I'm going to go with Reckless. I love it. Oh, that's so good. What about you, Ryan? Have you thought of another another word for yourself here besides passionate? Hmm. I don't know why I'm having such a hard time with this. Like, I feel like... We like we had a really good concept at the beginning. We were like, okay, look, we're people are on a team. We've got this thing. So like, I feel yeah. like we need to like, do we need to maybe talk it's it out together a little more to like, you know, rather than trying to like sit quietly and stare at each other and come up with words, do we need to talk it out a little bit. <laughs> yeah, I mean, and that's uh that there's there's we a lot of different way. options. I, <laughs> I I like the uh the concept of like this this betrayal kind of broke my character. Yeah. And and I've been like single minded. Yeah. Since then. Mm -hmm. Trying to stop you and you're just trying to do what you need to do. Defending yourself. Yeah. Against my I mean, I, it feels kind of reckless. I was going to say reckless feels like it kind of fits what you're talking about. It was like, yeah, I've, I've got this. Look, I know what I want and I'm going to do whatever I need to do. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I was I was literally just talking it out, and I'm like, it feels reckless. Feels oh wait, reckless. that's a word. I that can is choose. a word. <laughs> <laughs> I'll also say, in the process of play, I have added to this list during playtesting, and if you have a word that like calls to you that's not on this list, it's not breaking something okay. to be like, this is a description of my character. <laughs> okay. In fact, I was considering taking, and in fact, I think I am going to take a word not on my own list, um, which is that I think it's overconfident. So, like, I'm cunning and I, like, see myself as cunning yeah. more than I am. Like, I, I <laughs> am sometimes, but I have a little bit more confidence. It's not that I'm reckless. It's not that I go into a situation without planning. It's that I am so confident my plan is going to succeed and nothing could go wrong with it. <laughs> um, it's starting and... to sound to me like the way we probably met and became rivals is that some people were like, 
the two of you, I think, have some similar workflows <gasps> that I bet you'd work really well together, but it was actually I work a alone. disaster when I work alone. <laughs> <laughs> Just because we both get into massive uh, screw ups and then find our way out of them by just sheer charisma and effort uh, does not mean that the way that we get ourselves into those situations works for each other. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Someone tried to yeah. match make their two terrible friends so that they could um, yeah. be elsewhere, not around that person anymore. <laughs> mm -hmm. Absolutely. Our characters are kind of annoying in an enchanting way. Um, any other descriptor that you want, Seda, and then we could probably move on. Um. I think that I, I I think I'm 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 struggling between um, the concept of sort of like expanding on my character versus narrowing in what I've already said, like going and saying saying something like quick, which very much fits in with what I've already set up, versus trying to find something a little bit left from left field that would yes. um, add something different. You can pick two to three. So I think putting down quick and then like looking and seeing if there's something else that expands in a way that you like um, is a great idea. I think I am going to put vengeful. Uh, oh, I like the idea ooh. that part of the reason we are here is because I couldn't let it go. Oh, yes. I love that. I mean, that yeah. sounds I'll like... Uh, in there as well. I was also thinking about that for you, Ryan. Yeah, I'm going to put that on there too. Crossover episode. Our characters uh -huh. make a mess. <laughs> I've never gotten to make two sets of I Have the High Ground characters at once. And like watching the narrative parallels and development and inspiration pass back and forth is actually really fun for me. It's fascinating. Uh, yeah. Cool. Um, so unless anyone wants to toss uh, any, any more on, I think we're ready to move to the next thing. Yeah, I think so. Ryan's got three. I've got two. So that seems good. Mm -hmm. Cool. And Seda's got three and I've got two. Um, now we really blow things open. All right. Ex <laughs> exposition. What brings the two of you to this particular battlefield today mm. for whatever battlefield means? And that means the battlefield itself. The next thing that we'll do is environment and we'll fill out like a little bit more detail and description. Mm -hmm. But like, where are you? What are you doing? Why um, is what we start to spit? How out. did it come uh, to this? <laughs> how did it? Wow, what a great question! I, if I had not printed a physical book already, I would consider <laughs> borrowing that from you, Amelia, um, because that's exactly right. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm actually going to hop right into this because everything we've said yes. so far, Seda, has really given me an, um, some ideas. I love what you have of, going here. I'm really excited. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. Um, just this idea of they, what you were saying also, especially about like, can't let it go. I think they both came here knowing the other one would be here, but pretending they didn't know the other one would be Ooh. here. Does that make <laughs> sense? Like, uh, oh, why are you at Fancy this bar? Fancy seeing you here. Uh -huh. <laughs> right. I dressed up to come to this party for me because I wanted to look good for me for my own reasons personally. Uh, <laughs> nothing, nothing to do with anyone else. Oh, are you? Oh, I was posing in this doorway for the past 15 minutes because it's where I wanted to stand. Not because I knew you'd be coming in the back. Hi. <gasps> Exactly. <laughs> Just um, and which immediately leads to the idea that we are slightly overdressed for our surroundings because yes. we did it for each other like no one Wonderful. else in the bar is quite as dressed as we are mm -hmm. uh, oh i God. love the idea that this is like a wednesday you know like this is not a big <laughs> night it's just that we both know that we're on this planet or mm -hmm. space station or whatever it is uh and it's like some wednesday and everyone's like all right grabbing a beer after my shift and we're like showing up really in night out clothes <laughs> yeah. Yeah. you're at like this like really kind of crappy karaoke bar but you're like in the full yes. like night out like bachelorette party look like mm -hmm. absolutely <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh this is so fun Amazing. um so yeah i think that really answers much of this which is just that like we have had this uh, relationship of like wanting the other to fall in love and never having to say it ourselves and being convinced that the other just wants to like um, make us like belittle us with their accomplishments. And so this is another sort of cycle in that we can't let that go. And we both this know where each so other unhealthy. will be. <laughs> oh, absolutely. 
um, <laughs> but dramatic. And that's the important right. part for this <laughs> game. Mm. Um, and so we both show up on this Wednesday because we know that when each other visits this place, they usually go to this bar and we're both there. Um, and it's, yeah, yeah, fancy meeting you here really yep. seems to answer yeah. the mm-hmm. exposition. It's great. So for ours. Yeah, I mean, it's it's epic end of the world time, right? It's a uh, it's season three finale. Yeah. Uh, that's, <laughs> that's, that's why that's we're together. Exposition. It is season yep. three. You <laughs> fancy meeting you here and season three finale. Uh-huh. <laughs> yes, yes. Uh-huh. Yeah, mm-hmm. okay. So who has I want to know who has this orb right now? You have Ooh. the orb. I have the orb. Okay. Yeah. Oh, because um, you would have destroyed it already if you had. Uh-huh. Yeah. And and part of uh what I was thinking is what if uh, like the orb has a hold on me because Ooh. the orb wants to be destroyed. Because it knows. Oh. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So that's that's why I've like completely flipped. Oh gosh. So you're the evil one now. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Cool. I like that that's so much. Wonderful. Yeah, all right. I think and I think I feel like that's a good enough reason, honestly. Uh-huh. Is that like yeah, that's great. I think I think there's probably some kind of like prophecy for like time and place where it needs to be destroyed or something like that. So like we're we're here, you know. Yeah, yeah. Um we've spent four episodes building to get here. It but. has to be like like some ridiculous like uh, portal a to a different planet or on oh, a, okay. oh, yeah on a volcano <laughs> or so, so, something. It's a ridiculous. portal inside a volcano, actually. Portal inside a volcano. Yes. Why not? <laughs> yeah, it's but it has it's blue the only lava. thing hot enough to heat the molecules up to the right temperature to, to, to vibrate to open it. for the portal. Yeah. 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 Because uh-huh. yeah. yeah, you know, heat is a lot of energy. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Um, yeah geothermal portals right yeah, maybe, geothermal maybe I'm portals. purple can i have purple lava oh <gasps> yes obviously oh. that's part, that's like, part blue of the or ritual purple. right <laughs> is it bluish purple because i feel like i mean i know oh. that you're like a blue teal like is kind of your oh, your color yeah. uh what but as a necromancer if, i'm very purple red yeah yeah, yeah. what if it's like uh if it's like blending where <gasps> we're it's standing it's a swirling like <gasps> teal purple volcano yeah. great so like, <laughs> love it yeah like the lava colors are important facts are altering as we move through this terrain. Oh, yeah, yeah. And Please like, understand that these are the important facts. That's what I'm saying. Oh my God. <laughs> Once we get into characters, it's going to be all stuff. You've like made this, a game so really that lets it. us just only say the things that we normally say anyway, but they're actually yeah. important now. Uh-huh. Yes. Yeah. And like every description I'm hearing, and like our capes are going to look phenomenal. Oh my gosh, they're going to look so cool. They're going to look so cool. <laughs> I already kind of like in my head a little bit now. Okay. Yeah. All right. <laughs> so now we do the environment. Huh. Like a volcano. It was coming up in All conversation. Right. Isn't it convenient that it's next? Uh-huh. So you have a variety of or statements and you choose one adjective from three different or statements like dangerous or secure or dilapidated or pristine. Um, And my advice here is to always try and use these to expand. Like if you have already established something, you don't need to say, well, obviously it's boiling. Um, You can. There's nothing wrong with doing that. But like always look at this as an opportunity to ask, well, is it surrounded or isolated? We haven't really considered that. Um, So yes, just pick one uh, from the three uh one option from three of these sets Mm -hmm. all right so i went ahead and did pick precarious right away ryan if that's cool with you yeah that seemed like it was important to me precarious sounds perfect for the inside of a volcano that can open portals yeah (laughs) i'm imagining you all like floating on pieces of like cracked like rock yeah like 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 volcanic glass like i want to be like black volcanic glass kind of like Mm -hmm. yeah yeah. Oh, that's so good. I also see boiling was uh, was highlighted in there. Yeah, I mean, I, I highlighted boiling. I guess it could technically be freezing, too, but we did talk about, you know, the heat and the energy. And yeah, you know. um, I, and I, I just feel like, like freezing it. lava. It, I don't know. There's something about it that kind of like isn't as cool to me. Right. Well, it it's too cool. Brain. That's the problem. It's, right. You're right. It is <laughs> too, too cool. hard. Right. Right. So I think boiling makes sense. <laughs> it's true. Um, whether we want to use that as one of our words or not is, you know, if if we want to call that a given or if we want to mm-hmm. just like, you know, actually use that is fine. Um, I do like uh, possibly ancient. I do like that, too. So it's like the ancient boiling precarious volcano. Yeah. Uh, 
Ugh. Yeah, ancient immediately makes me think um, that like this was like a temple or something at some right. point. Like you are, yeah. you have to do the ritual here because this has always been a site of magical power. Right. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I was going to say ancient right. or windy, but I think ancient has more like happening with it. <gasps> yeah, ancient and w- windy would be great too. Oh, I know. the blowing Can we of pick the four? caves. <gasps> Can we pick yeah. four? Oh, please. Okay. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So we have precarious, boiling, ancient, and windy. Uh huh. Awesome. Oh, this okay. is glorious. Oh, so good. I am so stuck on the karaoke bar idea. I'm imagining a game of <laughs> like this game, but oh, every single it move is, is just that stakes. you. It's so Ooh. low stakes. The idea that you could have a move that is, I get up and sing a song that was very meaningful in our relationship. Um, like that is oh. like a hard, aggressive move and that I it's like, I'm, you I'm, in the I'm singing I... our song. Yeah. But like, or or you're looking somebody else in the eyes as you <gasps> sing your song. Ugh. Absolutely. <laughs> Every so, game I play of I Have the High Ground brings up like five other games of I Have the High Ground that would be fantastic. Um, but I love the idea of like that is the mechanic of this battle is like karaoke sing off. Like, <laughs> it's so I and your, change your a weapon. pronoun to you. I, I <laughs> sing a, t- a really mean Taylor Swift song, but I say you instead of he. <laughs> 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 your weapon is like a really good voice yeah. that like everyone is like paying attention well, it sounds yeah. like the, the weapon is an arsenal of taylor swift songs <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> yes. that is in my toolkit <laughs> okay so for ours uh maybe unconventionally the thing that first calls to me is bright because it's a Wednesday. <gasps> I love the idea that yes. like this is not some Funny. like dimly lit oh. night life. But now you can see how gross this bar is. This, because yes. it's light. just early on a Wednesday. It's 2 PM All the on fluorescents a Wednesday. are up and it is <laughs> We are in a spaceship. Yeah, we got there early to case the joint, but both of us got there early to case the joint. Oh. Um, and so we just had to do our, I was just here at 2 p.m. <laughs> 2 o'clock and afternoon karaoke. The full fluorescence on and everything. I um, love that because I, I was going to suggest dim. Um, and so having that totally turned on its head is like very exciting to me. I love, I it. love it. I love it. Uh, any else, anything else here calling out to you, Seda? I want to say cramped and I want to lean on it's literally some of the chairs are still up on the tables like you know oh. there's, there's a whole section that hasn't been opened yet because their nighttime server doesn't come in for another two hours. <laughs> uh. <laughs> so good. And finally, on that note, I think serene until we get there. Yeah. There's like the staff and there's like one or two really regulars who have decided like they hang out in here in the afternoon with the staff or something. Yeah, Um, absolutely. And they are having a calm, normal Wednesday until Mm. these two absolute weirdos show up. Oh, my God. I love this so much. Yeah, that's great. I love that. I, I I love this entire step because it just like it just changed so many of the images that I had going in where I was going in with much more of a genre standard idea. And so defining it further made it totally different in a way that is so exciting, and especially because it makes it so much more humiliating for our characters that this <laughs> is how it's happening. <laughs> I, I love that you leaned into like, it is Wednesday, it is 2 p.m., the chairs are on the tables, and then Ryan and I are like, it's a volcano! And like we're like, all the tropes. We're like, every single trope you can put from this anime like it is in there now and you were like what if none of those though you you asked is there a scale is there a scale that this game is best for and we are really proving it is literally any scale i love it so much Uh uh-huh and i love that ryan and i can just do our thing Mm -hmm. (laughs) whatever yeah setting vibes for you like i've played lots and lots of science fiction but i love that people can do whatever they want with it we've we've finished our environments We've we've done our exposition in our environment. Now I see the next thing on my list is Cape. Is yes, that accurate? It is. Yes, it <laughs> yes. is. So we yes. are moving into the character section. So background really focused on like what's the story behind you, what's the genre, what is your story with each other? And now we really move into like you as individuals. And the very first most important thing to define about you as an individual 
is what is your cape like? Um, and as you can tell from this game, I love capes. I think they're so cool and good and neat. And I think every game designer should be as self-indulgent as possible. This is your <laughs> opportunity to make a person playing your game do whatever it is that you want. Uh, v- v- Viditia, uh, Viditia Valetti, I think, is the name of the person who made... Oh, the system is escaping me right now. But uh, in that game, there's space whales. Mm. And the rules text is basically just like, I like space whales, so you have to define why, why space whales exist in your space setting. I like, love it. Do they have to like <laughs> come up mechanically in any way? No, but I need you but to define are. the space whales. They're yes. here and you're going to tell me about them. <laughs> and that is me with capes here. Um, that said... It is not just decorative. Okay. Capes have a mechanical effect in this game. So it says in the rules text that you reserve the right to decide your cape in secret and then like write it down and the two of you reveal it together. Almost no player I have ever played with has done this. (laughs) Because it also says you are welcome to like collaborate, which is what most people who play a game like this want to do. But you have the right if you want to do it in secret. And the reason that that might be something that you want is because there is a cape rubric and whoever wins the cape rubric is going to get to pick something. (gasps) And so... So you don't um, want the other person to be better than you. I see. I see. Yes. And so uh, I'll first say what you win by winning the cape rubric, then share the cape rubric, then we'll work on our capes. So what you win is either to pick the first advantage, which is the next thing on our characters. Basically, advantages are purely narrative, but they're like, do you have, is the territory familiar for you? Or do you have superior fashion? It's what can you like gloat over the other person Mm -hmm. about uh, in this duel? And if you have the better cape, based on my rubric, um, (laughs) you can choose to be the first person to pick an advantage from the list. I gotcha. Mm -hmm. If you don't pick it, If you don't pick that, the other option is you receive priority on the first turn of play. So priority is a tiebreaker. This is a a rock, paper, scissors, right? What happens if you both thrust? Whoever has priority wins. And priority is just exchanged back and forth each turn. In competitive fencing, priority is incredibly complicated and also used to settle ties when you like hit each other at the same time. (laughs) But I have massively simplified it because it has to do with like momentum and like judges call and it's like a whole thing oh that's fascinating thank you i like watched a bunch of i I'd never fenced or anything like that i'm talking to a friend like while we're recording this who did competitive fencing for years and like also is a huge star wars fan and fan of like these kinds of games in general and i was like please go find this right now (laughs) i have run into so many people who i didn't know Ezra is an artist I've worked with before. And then Ezra's like, actually, I was in a sword troupe in high school. Yeah. Um, so it this is, is the perfect funniest, for me. like, reveal of backstory from people that just keeps happening. Yeah. Like, it's something that if <laughs> some go, oh, I fence, be like, I feel as though I should have known that about you. Yeah. I don't know where it would have come up, but yeah, oh Ryan, my God. This is, this is Jude. He did it competitively and, like, went to college on scholarship what? for fencing. Yeah. That <laughs> blows my mind. Yeah. <laughs> For years and years and years. Yeah. Um, one of the people I'm getting to laser engrave the tokens, I'm getting quotes from a bunch of different places. And one of them was just like, yeah, I fenced. So it's super nice to me to work on these tokens. And I was like, what? <laughs> what? what? Who does that? Because uh, like, it feels like it is not that like, co- like, I like, I know lots of adults who do, but like, I don't, you know, like I have kids who are currently doing, you know, activities. Um, yeah. And I don't know anybody who like does fencing and like maybe That's we just don't live the in masks. a place. Oh, good point. <laughs> good call. Good call. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. Uh, While I was designing this, I watched a bunch of videos on competitive fencing rules and like read competitive fencing rule books in order to take inspiration from that for the mechanical design of my game about banter. Yeah. I love it. But anyway, thank you. Uh, You pass priority back and forth each turn. And that makes sure that it keeps the game dynamic, too, by making sure that like there's a 66% chance of winning for the person with priority if you assume like random choices and rock, paper, scissors. Mm -hmm. So that chance of winning goes back and forth to keep the game close most of the time. Random is random. But basically, if you have the better cape, you choose either I pick the first advantage and then my opponent has priority on the first turn or I get priority on the first turn and my opponent picks the first advantage. So it settles what order these things go in and you get to be the person who picks that order. Oh, 
The two of you have picked such a perfect genre for cape shenanigans. I know. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I've got mine in mind already. I do too. And here is the cape rubric. If you, uh, the, like, first one of these that you beat the other person on, you win. So the first one is whoever opted to wear a cape. So if one of you wears one, the other one doesn't, that person wins. Mm. Two. Who would opt to not wear a cape? Right. I know. <laughs> Okay. Uh, that I was think in, in my very <laughs> first playtest, I didn't because I ended up playing a very stoic, like, reserved mm. character. And I was like, listen, this breaks my heart, but I cannot come up I with a reason a why this person would wear a cape. And it's yeah. one of those things where it's like, should we start from the beginning again? Like, I've made somebody who doesn't wear a cape. <laughs> like, I've clearly like, made a wrong <laughs> choice somewhere. <laughs> How did this happen? <laughs> that isn't even true about me as a person. So, like, yeah. <laughs> You literally own capes. I um, sure do. I don't. Um, I should. But hey, good playtesting pushes the boundaries of the game. <laughs> and you prove that the game can be played without a cape. Yeah. Which mm -hmm. is why I have to include the first one. Whoever mm -hmm. opted to wear a cape. Two. If you both wore capes, which character's cape is the closest to floor length without going over? Oh. Um, and this is often where this rubric is settled. Um, Interesting. However, if you both have, and why is that the better cape? Because I like floor length capes, and that's about <laughs> it. And this is and my once again, space. This is your space whales. That's fine. This is my space whales. Then three, whichever player owns a cape in real life. Okay. So if you both got equal length capes, it is whoever owns oh, a cape. You win that one then. <laughs> and Sato wins that I mean, I for don't, us. Yeah, I don't know that I... I mean, no, I guess they're not technically capes, probably. No. And then four, um, if you both own capes, whichever player last wore a cape. Oh. And then finally, five, then, and only then, you each roll 2d6, highest roll wins, reroll ties. <laughs> you have to go through all of those other steps before I let you resort wow. to dice for this. I have been informed by said fencing friend that this is a very good mechanic. That getting oh, priority nice. based on capes is a good mechanic. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for joining us for part one of this character creation series. We'll be back in part two, picking up right where we left off. Character Creation Cast is a production of the One Shot Podcast Network and can be found online at www.charactercreationcast.com. Head to the website to get more information on our hosts, this show, and even our press kit. Character Creation Cast can be found on Twitter at CreationCast or on our Discord server at discord.charactercreationcast.com. I'm one of your hosts, Amelia Antrim, and I can be found on Twitter at Ginger Reckoning or on my other podcast, Garbage of the Five Rings. Our other host, Ryan Bolter, can be found on Twitter at Lord Neptune or online at lordneptune.com. Music for this episode is used with a Creative Commons license or with permission from the podcast it originated from. Further information can be found within the show notes. Our main theme music is Hero Remix by Steve Combs and is used with a Creative Commons license. This podcast is owned by us, under Creative Commons. This episode was edited by the absolutely fantastic Ryan Bolter. Further information for the game system used in today's guests can also be found in the show notes. If you'd like to support our show, find us on Patreon. Get access to bonus episodes, extra outtakes, and much, much more at patreon.com slash character creation cast. Thanks for joining us. And remember, we find the best part of any role-playing game is character creation. So go out there and create some amazing people. We'll see you next time. Now we gotta read some show blurbs. Show blurbs. Show blurbs. Show blurbs. Show blurbs. Show blurbs. <laughs> Character Creation Cast is hosted by the One Shot Podcast Network. If you enjoyed our show, visit OneShotPodcast.com, where you'll find other great shows like Iron Edda Reforged, Puppet Strings. Ragnarok is coming, and it's you. Join creator Tracy Barnett and performers Alex Flanagan, D. Zelda, and Jeff Stormer as they navigate a Norse cyberpunk city to accomplish their ultimate goal. The Fall of the Gods, part actual play and part playtest, 
Puppet Strands gives you a look behind the scenes of the development of Ironator Reforged and into the minds of four amazing designers.